come to you today with episode 17. This is also going to be another short one. The reason being is because the case that I'm going to give you today is one that combats the ideals of when you're encountering someone and they cannot articulate to you exactly what crime they feel you are being suspected of or even stating infraction and you're not participating in any kind of commercial activity or you're not even participating in a privilege. Again, something I'm going to get into a little later. But today it comes from Howell versus my state, Texas. 392 U.S. 514-533-1968. Criminal penalties may be inflicted only if the accused has committed some act, has engaged in some behavior, which society has an interest of preventing. Now, understanding that last portion, because not only are they trying to say, oh, well, I need, need your fingerprints for this, or I, need to, I have to identify you, or I want to know who you are. None of that means anything if they cannot articulate a crime. So therefore, there is no purpose for identification. That goes through their investigation, because they investigate and a crime has been committed. Then, and only then can ID be presented or who you are even be a fact because again if you are participating in an activity that nobody wants to prevent such as photography and first amendment audits that kind of throws the rest of that out the window because they can't force you to engage in any other activity that requires identification that requires you to be known because they have no lawful reason to be there. Understanding that and going forward in the next step is, again, the easiest part to allow you to be safe, allow your privacy to remain as it is, and also allows them to do their job properly. Now, I only bring up First Amendment audits because I've also been watching a lot of them and how police officers that know the law and choose not to follow it behave when they're with them until a lot of these young men and young women state what they're supposed to do and force them to do their job properly. Now, the thing is, a lot of us regular people that are not out doing audits or anything of that nature are encountered, such as people that are still in portions of New York where they still, although being sued for it, are participating in stop and frisk. Why? Because it's been ingrained into the mentality of not only the police officers, but those that are in those areas, not understanding what their actual legal rights are and ramifications for those rights being violated or even how to go about protecting those rights. Now, understanding, again, Powell versus Texas, if you haven't done anything and you're not doing anything that anybody feels like preventing other than somebody that's scared of everything that's being reported to on the news, then there's no lawful reason to be identified, to turn anything over, or to basically become a police officer and do their job for them. So until next time.